My name is Mike, and I prefer to be called so. Um, Mr. Chairman and my colleagues at the high table, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor that you have me share this important day with you. It's true, I lead the team at Beige. We ourselves are an entrepreneurial organization and evolving quite rapidly on a yearly basis. So as a student of entrepreneurship, I'd confess that it's indeed a broad subject about which I make new discoveries every day. And as I journey on, some of these I have learned and I'd like to share with you. The story of my life is dotted with several accounts of entrepreneurial experiences at several stages of my development. So many are these that at a point I lost count of them and they come up only when I have to deeply reminisce and see how far I have come in this journey. I recall an account. I was barely 12 years old and a second grader at Presec Legon and we were on vacation. As usual, I was home taking care of my kid sisters on a bare-born budget. And boy so much needed some loose cash on him to afford some little luxuries. And as I strolled around the outskirts of our neighborhood, I walked past a house whose frontage was overgrown with weeds. And I thought to myself, I could do something for these guys in this house. So I instinctively walked to the house, knocked at the gate, and got ushered in. In there was a fairly old man and a woman. Later, I got to know they lived there alone as their kids were all outside Ghana. So I made my pitch to them. I told them I was willing to maintain their lawn for a fee. They asked me how much I would charge, and I didn't know what to say. What was weeding to a Form 2 boy at Presec? I was Coco Cra. Because in school, we were made to weed almost as though it was a pastime. The fact was, besides some drinks that a boy would gleefully have, my real needs were money to enable me rent a bicycle to ride. I'm sure the old man found me funny when I said I'll take anything. Long story short, I secured a contract as the gardener to Mr. Okansi. And the reality of my circumstances at that time was I was a contractor, whether you think about me as a child labor or not. This job I performed on a weekly basis throughout the vacation and never disclosed it to my mom. She still does not know about it till today, and I hope I can trust you all with my secret. Let me set the tone by confessing that I'm a passionate believer in the saying that the ones who are crazy enough to believe they can change the world are the ones who eventually do, and such people are entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurship has been with us since the evolution of this world, and as a matter of fact, economic entrepreneurship has been the driving force behind the many changes this world has seen over the years. The Man Who Built America, a documentary that I'm passionate about, traces the beginnings of entrepreneurs whose efforts had the most transformational impact on the American economy. They include Vanderbilt, who established the largest network of rural infrastructure, Andrew Carnegie, who scaled up steel production and revolutionized the construction of skyscrapers. Thomas Edison, who founded Electricity, Rocky Feller, the oil magnate, and J.P. Morgan. It is not as though there were no other entrepreneurs in existence at the time. There were, but the sheer size of the empires and the life-changing transformation they brought to American economy distinguished them from their peers in that generation. Similar stories of such nature can be told for other parts of this world. Guinness is a product and was founded in, 19, in 1759 in Dublin, Scotland. 
Hyundai was established in 1967. That's those amongst you aged 60 and above are older than the company Hyundai. Dangote, Glow, MTN are also examples we can refer to from Africa. These companies were all founded by individuals and over time they have blossomed into world-class giants, some of whom will have balance sheets comparable to some countries in Africa. Pardon me if I've not mentioned Ghana. I'm trying hard, but I can't lay hands on any statistics that could support any potential claim I would want to make. But wait a minute. Yes, data bank comes to mind. And group window. But really, big as these may be in our local circumstances, their size diminishes when we go beyond our borders. And I'll be back on this. You would observe, following the traits amongst the many examples you can think of, that entrepreneurial successes began from the West, then followed by East, Eastern Asia before it caught on with Africa. Really, the African giant started emerging only about three decades ago. I've been trying to decipher why this trend has been like that, and I'm wondering, could it be a function of how our politics has evolved in these regions? I'm tempted to hold this notion as fact, because the West matured much quicker with their politics, then followed by Asia and East Asia in that order. Interestingly, Ghana and some countries in East Asia gained political independence at around the same time. Yeah, and what happened? East Asia sort of enjoyed a longer period of stability than mighty Ghana and our other colleagues. When you analyze this soberly, it draws a clear picture. The African giant started emerging about two decades ago and coincidentally, that was the same time most of our countries began experiencing a bit of political stability. So the theory could remain true, that entrepreneurship began thriving when our countries became politically stable. Is that not a shame? Why did it take so long for our leaders then to figure this seemingly simple equation out? Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, our first president of glorious memory, in a famous speech said, the independence of Ghana is meaningless if it is not linked to the total liberation of the African continent. I believe that this idea of liberation extended to a phase of continuous, uninterrupted governance. So out of curiosity, I googled the top 100, 100 companies in Africa. I did not find any of Ghanaian origin. I extended my search to 500, and here's what I found. Out of the top 500 companies in Africa, about 160 come from South Africa. That's 30%. And over 70 come from Morocco. That's 15%. Nigeria ranks number six, contributing 25 companies, and Ghana contributed four. And of the four, three are state-owned. PBC, that's a produce buying company, Goyle, and VRA. Join me, celebrate Data Bank for representing private corporate Ghana on the list of the top 500 companies in Africa. In 2015, at the Ghana Economic Forum, I remarked that Ghana has lost 20 years of our entrepreneurial evolution. What I sought to mean was that our founding entrepreneurs did not have the opportunity to fulfill their full potential, so they would be able to positively infect successive generations with the same drive. This was simply as a result of our continuous interruptions in the political development process. Consequently, the entrepreneurial instincts in a lot of persons was killed, or simply put, not allowed to even fester. Barely 30 years ago, it would have taken an extremely audacious fellow to dare start a bank, let alone go public with it. 
So Ghana is late in this paradigm, but thanks to the new order, we're beginning to witness a bit of transformation in entrepreneurship. I see four broad groups of entrepreneurs in our country at the moment. The first group started, but did not finish well for the reasons I have adduced above. The second group started quite late, have done pretty well, would have loved to do more, but age has caught up with them. I'm using the term done well advisedly here, simply referring to the size of their industries and the potential of those industries to outlive their promoters. Join me again to pay respects to, our real, to the real entrepreneurs amongst these first two generations. I emphasize on the real entrepreneurs because I believe we're all aware that even amongst entrepreneurs of today, they are the true ones and the political entrepreneurs. The former do last. Then comes the third group who started the entrepreneurial journeys. Some of them are already midway and all of whom have begun gaining momentum. Finally, the fourth group yet to emerge but who have started doing small things and dreaming very wild. I call them Generation X. It's my belief that the next decade would witness a revolution in entrepreneurship never before witnessed in our country if the peace we enjoy with governance prevails. And we must brace ourselves for that change. Individuals are going to emerge who would launch projects and initiatives that hitherto were preserved for governments. In today's world, size is everything. Kituwebienswa is a thing of the past. Globalization and advancement in technology has made size and scalability a very important indicator in determining the future of any business undertaken. So the new businesses that will emerge will not be thinking of mere subsistence and cuteness, but will be concerning themselves with how many clients they are reaching, how many sales points they have, how many staff they employ, and how much more. And here's where I believe academia can facilitate this. One of the challenges I have faced, and I realize most of my seniors also have faced, is that of acceptance. Somehow, our culture and orientation has skewed us into accepting that anything good and true must either come from a foreigner or an older person. Academia should help orient our youth to believe in themselves and each other. We are as good as our colleagues from the East, as good as our colleagues from the West, and can do all they do if our people would accept us believe in us, patronize us, support us, and encourage us. Let me conclude by posturing that entrepreneurship, first of all, is a behavioral trait. It can be taught, but like footballing skills, the more natural the trait is with the person, the farther they would go. Some would ask, are entrepreneurs born or made? What a debate, I believe this will spark, but I reserve my thoughts on that. Ladies and gentlemen, entrepreneurship in Ghana is once again beginning to gain momentum. It will take my kind to dream, your kind to support, and the government to facilitate the activities of entrepreneurs before we all can harvest the potential fruits as are beginning to be enjoyed, already being enjoyed by countries ahead of us. Thank you very much for having me, and I wish you a good session thereafter.